After the Last Breath by Thomas Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King J. H. 1813-1904 to 1904. There's no more to be done, or feared or hoped. None now need watch, speak low, and list and tire. No irksome crease outsmoothed, no pillow sloped, does she require. Blankly we gaze, we are free to go or stay. Our morrow's anxious plans have missed their aim. Whether we leave tonight or wait till day counts as the same. The lettered vessels of medicaments seem asking wherefore we have set them here. Each palliative its silly face presents as useless gear. And yet we feel that something savours well. We note a numb relief withheld before. Our well-beloved is prisoner in the cell of time no more. We see by littles now the deft achievement whereby she has escaped the wrongers all, in view of which our momentary bereavement outshapes but small. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Armada by Thomas Babington Macaulay Read for LibriVox.org by Son of the Exiles The Armada Attend all ye who list to hear our noble England's praise. I tell of the thrice famous deeds she wrought in ancient days, when that great fleet, invincible against her bore in vain, the richest spoils of Mexico, the stoutest hearts of Spain. It was about the lovely close of a warm summer day, There came a gallant merchant ship full sail to Plymouth Bay. Her crew hath seen Castile's black fleet beyond Orony's Isle, At earliest twilight on the waves lie heaving many a mile. At sunrise she escaped their van by God's especial grace, And the tall pinter till the noon had held her in close chase. Forthwith a guard at every gun was placed along the wall. The beacon blazed upon the roof of Edgecombe's lofty hall. Many a light fishing bark put out to pry along the coast, and with loose rein and bloody spur rode inland many a post. With his white hair unbonneted, the stout old sheriff comes. Before him march the halberdiers, before him sound the drums. His yeomen round the market cross make clear an ample space, for there behooves him to set up the standard of her grace. And haughtily the trumpets peal, and gaily dance the bells, as slow upon the labouring wind the royal blazon swells. Look how the lion of the sea lifts up his ancient crown, and underneath his deadly paw treads the gay lilies down. So stalked he when he turned to flight, on that famed Picard field, Bohemia's plume and Genoa's bow, and Caesar's eagle shield. So glared he when at Agincourt in wrath he turned to bay, and crushed and torn beneath his claws the princely hunters lay. Ho, strike the flagstaff deep, Sir Knight, ho, scatter flowers, fair maids, ho, gunners, fire a loud salute, ho, gallants, draw your blades. Thou sun shine on her joyously, Ye breezes waft her wide, Our glorious semper eadem, The banner of our pride. The freshening breeze of eve unfurled That banner's massy fold, The parting gleam of sunlight kissed That haughty scroll of gold. Night sank upon the dusky beach, And on the purple sea, Such night in England ne'er hath been, Nor e'er again shall be. From Ediston to Berwick bounds, from Lynn to Millfield Bay, That time of slumber was as bright and busy as the day. For swift to east and swift to west the ghastly war flame spread, High on St. Michael's Mount it shone, it shone on Beachy Head. Far on the deep the Spaniard saw along each southern shire, Cape beyond cape in endless range, those twinkling points of fire. 
The fisher left his skiff to rock on Tamar's glittering waves. The rugged miners poured to war from Mendip's sunless caves. O'er Longleat's towers, o'er Cranbourne's oaks, the fiery herald flew. He roused the shepherds of Stonehenge, the rangers of Beaulieu. Right sharp and quick the bells all night rang out from Bristol town, and ere the day three hundred horse had met on Clifton Down. The sentinel on Whitehall Gate looked forth into the night, and saw o'er hanging Richmond Hill the streak of blood-red light. Then bugle's note and cannon's roar the death-like stillness broke, and with one start and with one cry the royal city woke. At once on all her stately gates arose the answering fires, at once the wild alarm clashed from all her reeling spires, from all the batteries of the tower pealed loud the voice of fear, and all the thousand masts of Thames sent back a louder cheer. And from the furthest wards was heard the rush of hurrying feet, and the broad streams of pikes and flags rushed down each roaring street, and broader still became the blaze, and louder still the din, as fast from every village round the horse came spurring in. And eastward straight from wild black heath the warlike errand went, and roused in many an ancient hall the gallant squires of Kent. Southward from Surrey's pleasant hills flew those bright couriers forth. High on bleak Hampstead's swarthy moor they started for the north. And on and on without a pause, untired they bounded still. All night from tower to tower they sprang, they sprang from hill to hill. Till the proud peak unfurled the flag o'er Darwin's rocky dales, Till like volcanoes flared to heaven the stormy hills of Wales. Till twelve fair counties saw the blaze on Morven's lonely height, Till streamed in crimson on the wind the Recon's crest of light till broad and fierce the stars came forth on Ely's stately fane, and tower and hamlet rose in arms o'er all the boundless plain, till Beaver's lordly terraces the sign to Lincoln sent, and Lincoln sped the message on o'er the wide vale of Trent, till Skiddaw saw the fire that burned on Gaunt's embattled pile, and the red glare on Skiddaw roused the burghers of Carlisle. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ashes of Life by Edna St. Vincent Millay Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira August 2015 Love has gone and left me, and the days are all alike. Eat I must, and sleep I will, and would that night were here. But ah, oh, to lie awake and hear the slow hours strike. Would that it were day again, with twilight near. Love has gone and left me, and I don't know what to do. This or that, or what you will, is all the same to me. But all the things that I begin, I leave before I'm through. There's little use in anything, as far as I can see. Love has gone and left me, and the neighbours knock and borrow, and life goes on forever like the gnawing of a mouse. And tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, there's this little street. And this little house. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beauty by Charles Baudelaire. Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle. I am as lovely as a dream in stone, and this my heart, where each finds death in turn inspires the poet with a love as lone as clay eternal and as taciturn swan white of heart a sphinx no mortal knows my throne is in the heaven's azure deep i hate all movements that disturb my pose i smile not ever neither do i weep 
Before my monumental attitudes that breathe a soul into the plastic arts, my poets pray in austere studious moods. For I, to fold enchantment round their hearts, have pools of light where beauty flames and dies the placid mirrors of my luminous eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Book Lover by Robert Service Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio I keep collecting books I know I'll never, never read. My wife and daughter tell me so, and yet I never heed. Please make me, says some wistful tome, a wee bit of yourself. And so I take my treasure home and tuck it in a shelf. And now my very shelves complain, they jam and overspill. They say, why don't you ease our strain? Some day, I say, I will. So book by book they plead and sigh, I pick and dip and scan, then put them back, distressed that I am such a busy man. Now there's my Boswell and my Stern, my Gibbon and Defoe. To savor swift I'll never learn. On Tain I may not know. On Bacon I will never sup. For Shakespeare I've no time, because I'm busy making up these jingly bits of rhyme. Chukov is caviar to me, while Stendhal makes me snore. Poor Proust is not my cup of tea, and Balzac is a bore. I have their books, I love their names, and yet, alas, they head with Lawrence, Joyce, and Henry James, my roster of unread. I think it would be very well if I commit a crime and get put in a prison cell and not allowed to rhyme. Yet, given all these worthy books, according to my need, I now caress with loving looks, but never, never read. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Career by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk break me my bounds and let me fly to regions vast of boundless sky nor i like piteous daphne be root bound ah no i would be free as yon same bird that in its flight outstrips the range of mortal sight free as the mountain streams that gush from bubbling springs and downward rush across the serrate mountain's side the rocks o'erwhelmed their banks defied and like the passions in the soul swell into torrents as they roll oh circumscribe me not by rules that serve to lead the minds of fools but give me power to work my will and at my deeds the world shall thrill my words shall rouse the slumbering zest that hardly stirs in manhood's breast and as the sun feeds lesser lights as planets have their satellites so round about me i will bind the men who prize a master mind he lived a silent life alone and laid him down when it was done and at his head was placed a stone on which was carved a name unknown end of poem this recording is in the public domain a child's laughter by algernon charles swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. All the bells of heaven may ring, 
all the birds of heaven may sing all the wells on earth may spring all the winds on earth may bring all sweet sounds together sweeter far than all things heard hand of harper tone of bird sounds of woods at sundawn stirred welling waters winsome word wind in warm wan weather one thing yet there is that none hearing ere its chime be done knows not well the sweetest one heard of man beneath the sun hoped in heaven hereafter soft and strong and loud and light very sound of very light heard from morning's rosiest height when the soul of all delight fills a child's clear laughter golden bells of welcome rolled never for such notes nor told hours so blithe in tones so bold as the radiant mouth of gold here that rings forth heaven if the golden crested wren were a nightingale why then something seen and heard of men might be half as sweet as when laughs a child of seven and a poem this recording is in the public domain the dancers by michael field read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i dance and dance another fawn a black one dances on the lawn he moves with me and when i lift my heels his feet directly shift i can't outdance him though i try he dances nimbler than i i toss my head and so does he what tricks he dares to play on me i touch the ivy in my hair ivy he has and finger there the spiteful thing to mock me so i will outdance him ho 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 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Down by the Sally Gardens by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Down by the Sally Gardens my love and I did meet. She passed the Sally Gardens with little snow-white feet. She bid me take love easy as the leaves grow on the tree. But I, being young and foolish, with her would not agree. In a field by the river my love and I did stand, and on my leaning shoulder she laid her snow-white hand. She bid me take life easy as the grass grows on the weirs. But I was young and foolish, and now am full of tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fair is my love that feeds among the lilies by Bartholomew Griffin. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Fair is my love that feeds among the lilies. The lilies growing in that pleasant garden where Cupid's mount, that well-beloved hill, is, and where that little god himself is warden. See where my love sits in the beds of spices, beset all round with camphor, myrrh, and roses, and interlaced with curious devices, which her from all the world apart encloses. There doth she tune her lute for her delight, and with sweet music makes the ground to move, whilst I poor i do sit in heavy plight wailing alone my unrespected love not daring rush into so rare a place that gives to her and she to it a grace end of poem this recording is in the public domain a farewell to arms to queen elizabeth by George Peel. Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Tucker. His golden locks time hath to silver turned. O oh, time too swift, O oh, swiftness never ceasing. 
his youth gainst time and age hath ever spurned but spurned in vain youth waneth by increasing beauty strength youth are flowers but fading seen duty faith love are roots and ever green his helmet now shall make a hive for bees and lovers sonnets turned to holy psalms a man at arms must now serve on his knees and feed on prayers which are age his arms but though from court to cottage he depart his saint is sure of his unspotted heart and when he saddest sits in homely cell he'll teach his swains this carol for a song blessed be the hearts that wish my sovereign well cursed be the souls that think her any wrong goddess allow this aged man his right to be your beadsman now that was your knight End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. First Love by John Clare. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. I ne'er was struck before that hour with love so sudden and so sweet. Her face had bloomed like a sweet flower, and stole my heart away complete. My face turned pale as deadly pale, my legs refused to walk away, and when she looked, what could I ail? My life and all seemed turned to clay. And then my blood rushed to my face and took my sight away. The trees and bushes round the place seemed midnight at noonday. I could not see a single thing, words from my eyes did start. They spoke as chords do from the string, and blood burnt round my heart. Are flowers the winter's choice? Is love's bed always snow? She seemed to hear my silent voice and love's appeal to know. I never saw so sweet a face as that I stood before. My heart has left its dwelling place and can return no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forgiveness by George William Russell. Read for LibriVox by John Perkins. At dusk, the window panes grew gray. The wet world vanished in the gloom. The dim and silver end of day scarce glimmered through the little room and all my sins were told i said such things to her who knew not sin the sharp ache throbbing in my head the fever running high within i touched with pain her purity sin's darker sense i could not bring my soul was black as night to me. To her, I was a wounded thing. I needed love no words could say. She drew me softly nigh her chair, my head upon her knees to lay, with cool hands that caressed my hair. She sat with hands as if to bless, and looked with grave, ethereal eyes, ensouled by ancient quietness, a gentle priestess of the wise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Lazy Day by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. The trees bend down along the stream Where anchored swings my tiny boat. The day is one to drowse and dream And list the thrush's throttling note When music from his bosom bleeds Among the river's rustling reeds no ripple stirs the placid pool when my adventurous line is cast a truce to sport 
while clear and cool the mirrored clouds slide softly past the sky gives back a blue divine and all the world's wide wealth is mine a pickerel leaps a bow of light the minnows shine from side to side the first faint breeze comes up the tide i pause with half uplifted oar while night drifts down to claim the shore end of poem this recording is in the public domain life is struggle by arthur hugh clough read for librivox.org by newgate novelist to wear out heart and nerves and brain and give oneself a world of pain be eager angry fierce and hot imperious supple god knows what for what's all one to have or not o oh, false unwise absurd and vain for tis not joy it is not gain it is not in itself a bliss only it is precisely this that keeps us all alive to say we truly feel the pain and quite are sinking with the strain entirely simply undeceived believe and say we ne'er believed the object e'en were it achieved a thing we e'er had cared to keep with heart and soul to hold it cheap and then to go and try it again o oh, false unwise absurd and vain oh tis not joy and tis not bliss only it is precisely this that keeps us still alive end of poem this recording is in the public domain morning by paul lawrence dunbar read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk the mist has left the greening plain the dewdrops shine like fairy rain the coquette rose awakes again her lovely self adorning the wind is hiding in the trees a sighing soothing laughing tease until the rose says kiss me please tis morning tis morning with staff in hand and careless free the wanderer fares right jauntily for towns and houses are thinks he for scorning for scorning my soul is swift upon the wing and in its deeps a song i bring come love and we together sing tis morning tis morning end of poem this recording is in the public domain oak and olive by james elderay flecker read for librivox dot org by algy pug one though i was born a londoner and bred in gloucestershire i walked in hellas years ago with friends in white attire and i remember how my soul drank wine as pure as fire and when i stand by charing cross i can forget to hear the crash of all those smoking wheels when those cold flutes and clear pipe with such fury down the street my hands grow moist with fear and there's a hall in bloomsbury no more i dare to tread for all the stone men shout at me and swear they are not dead and once i touched a broken girl and knew that marble bled two but when i walk in athens town that swims in dust and sun perverse i think of london then where massive work is done and with what sweep at westminster the rayless waters run i ponder how from attic seed there grew an english tree how byron like his heroes fell fighting a country free 
and Swinburne took from Shelley's lips the kiss of poetry. And while our poets chanted Pan back to his pipes and power, great Verrall, bending at his desk, and searching hour on hour, found out old gardens where the wise may pluck a Spartan flower. 3. When I go down the Gloucester lanes, my friends are deaf and blind. Fast as they turn their foolish eyes, the maenads leap behind, and when I hear the fire-winged feet, they only hear the wind. Have I not chased the fluting pan through Cranham's sober trees? Have I not sat on Painswick Hill, with a nymph upon my knees, and she as rosy as the dawn, and naked as the breeze? 4. But when I lie in Grecian fields, smothered in asphodel, or climb the blue and barren hills, or sing in woods that smell with such hot spices of the south as mariners might sell, then my heart turns where no sun burns to lands of glittering rain, to fields beneath low clouded skies new widowed of their grain, and autumn leaves like blood and gold that strew a Gloucester lane. Five. Oh, well I know sweet Hellas now, and well I knew it then, when I with starry lads walked out, but ah, for home again, was I not bred in Gloucestershire, one of the Englishmen? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Death of Sir Philip Sidney by Henry Constable Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Tucker Give pardon, blessed soul, to my bold cries, If they importune interrupt thy song, Which now with joyful notes thou singst Among the angel choiristers of the heavenly skies. Give pardon, eke, sweet soul, to my slow eyes, That since I saw thee now it is so long, And yet the tears that unto thee belong To thee, as yet they did not sacrifice. I did not know that thou wert dead before. I did not feel the grief I did sustain. The greater stroke astonisheth the more. Astonishment takes from us the sense of pain. I stood amazed when others' tears begun, and now begin to weep when they have done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. She Walks in Beauty by Lord Byron Read for LibriVox by John Perkins She walks in beauty like the night Of cloudless climes and starry skies And all that's best of dark and bright Meet in her aspect and her eyes Thus mellowed to the tender light Which heaven to gaudy day denies one ray the more, one shade the less, had half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven tress, or softly lightens o'er her face, where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure, how dear their dwelling place. And on that cheek and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm yet eloquent the smiles that win the tints that glow but tell of days in goodness spent a mind at peace with all below a heart whose love is innocent end of poem this recording is in the public domain Song of Consada by Lawrence Hope Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist As one may sip a stranger's bowl, You gave yourself, but not your soul. I wonder, now that time has passed, Where you will come to rest at last. You gave your beauty for an hour, I held it gently as a flower. You wished to leave me, told me so. 
I kissed your feet and let you go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Song of Republics by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Claudia Salto Fair freedom's ship, too long adrift, of every wind the sport, now rigged and manned, her course well planned, sails proudly out of port, and fluttering gaily from the mast, this motto is unfurled, let all men heed its truth, who read, republics rule the world. The universe is high as God, good is the final goal. The world revolves, and man evolves a purpose and a soul. No church can bind, no crown forbid thought's mighty upward course. Let kings give way before its sway, for God inspires its force. The hero of a vanished age was one who bathed in gore, who best could fight was noblest knight in savage days of yore. Now warrior chiefs are out of date, the times have changed, today we call men great who arbitrate and keep war's hounds at bay. The world no longer looks to priest or prince to know its needs. Earth's human throng has grown too strong to rule with courts and creeds. We want no kings but kings of toil, no crowns but crowns of deeds, not royal birth but sterling worth must mark the man who leads. Proud monarchies are out of step with modern thought today, for brotherhood is understood and thrones may pass away. Men dare to think. Concerted thought contains more power than swords. The force that binds united minds defeats mere savage hordes. Man needs no arbitrary hand to keep him in control. He feels the power grow hour by hour of his expanding soul. In God's stupendous scheme of worlds, he knows he has a place. He is no slave to cringe and crave some worthless monarch's grace. As ocean billows undermine the haughty shores each hour, time's sea has brought its waves of thought to crumble thrones of power and one by one shall kingdoms fall like leaves before the blast as man with man combines to plan republics formed to last columbia balked a tyrant king and built upon a rock in freedom's name a shrine whose fame outlived the century's shock now france within our port has set her symbol of rebirth her lifted hand tells sea and land republics light the earth one mighty church for all the world would make men far more kind one government would bring content to many restless mind sail on fair ship of freedom sail the wide sea's breadth and length till worlds unite to make the might of one republic's strength end of poem this recording is in the public domain sorrow by edna st vincent millay 
Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira August 2015 Sorrow, like a ceaseless rain, beats upon my heart. People twist and scream in pain. Dawn will find them still again. This has neither wax nor wane, neither stop nor start. People dress and go to town. I sit in my chair. All my thoughts are slow and brown. Standing up or sitting down little matters. Or what gown or what shoes I wear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Stanzas for Music by Lord Byron Read for LibriVox.org by John Perkins There be none of beauty's daughters with a magic like thee, And like music on the waters is thy sweet voice to me. When, as if its sound were causing, the charmed ocean's pausing, The waves lie still and gleaming, and the lulled winds seem dreaming. And the midnight moon is weaving her bright chain o'er the deep, whose breast is gently heaving as an infant's asleep. So the spirit bows before thee with a full but soft emotion, like the swell of summer's ocean. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The True Knight by Stephen Hawes Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Tucker For knighthood is not in the feats of war, As for to fight in quarrel, right or wrong, But in a cause which truth cannot defore. He ought himself for to make sure and strong, Justice to keep mixed with mercy among, And no quarrel a knight ought to take But for a truth, or for the common's sake. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wail of an Old-Timer by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Claudia Zalto each new invention doubles our worries and our troubles the scientific fellows are spoiling of our land with motor wire and cable nowadays we're scarcely able to walk or ride in peace of mind and tisn't safe to stand it fairly makes me crazy to see how Tarnal lazy the rising generation grows, and science is to blame. With telephones for talking and messengers for walking, our young men sit and loaf and smoke without a blush of shame. And then they weren't contented until some one invented a sort of jerky tape line clock to help on wasteful ways. And that infernal ticker spends money for em quicker than any neighborhood o' man in good old bygone days. The rising generation is spent so on creation, folks haven't time to talk or sing or cry or even laugh. But if you take the notion to want some such emotion, they've got it all on tap for you, right in the phonograph. But now a crazy creature has introduced the feature of artificial weather. I think we are nearly through. For when we once go straining to keep it dry or raining to suit the general public, it will bust the world in two. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 7 When I too long have looked upon your face, 
by Edna St. Vincent Millay Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira August 2015 When I too long have looked upon your face, wherein for me a brightness unobscured save by the mists of brightness has its place, and terrible beauty not to be endured, I turn away, reluctant, from your light, And stand irresolute, a mind undone, A silly, dazzled thing, deprived of sight, From having looked too long upon the sun. Then is my daily life a narrow room, In which a little while, uncertainly, Surrounded by impenetrable gloom, Among familiar things grown strange to me, Making my way, I pause and feel and hark, Till I become accustomed to the dark. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Mother Reads Aloud Author Unknown Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio When Mother Reads Aloud The past seems real as every day I hear the tramp of armies vast I see the spears and lances cast I join the thrilling fray Brave knights and ladies fair and proud i meet when mother reads aloud when mother reads aloud far lands seem very near and true i cross the desert's gleaming sands or hunt the jungle's prowling bands or sail the ocean blue far heights whose peaks the cold mist shroud i scale when mother reads aloud when mother reads aloud i long for noble deeds to do to help the right redress the wrong it seems so easy to be strong so simple to be true oh thick and fast the visions crowd my eyes when mother reads aloud and a poem this recording is in the public domain